All right, back in the basement again today to do a quick first impressions video of this barbell, which is the Texas Monster Squat Bar, not to be confused with the Texas Squat Bar. So this is, as the name implies, a monster version, which I'll get into in this video. But it's almost funny how I came across this barbell. You guys know me, I have a lot of gym equipment as is, barbells being probably the most predominant piece of equipment I own. At the time of making this video, I currently have 29 bars. And that's after having just shed a couple and I'm gonna to continue to shed some, but I don't hold on to a lot of my bars. If I did, I'd probably have well over 50 by this point. But I was really in the market for a 35 millimeter bar because I have a lot of power bars. I have a lot of 28 and a half millimeter bars. I have a couple of deadlift bars and I do have a dedicated squat bar made by Rogue, which I'm really fond of, but I hadn't owned any 35 millimeter bars. And the first time I used a 35 millimeter squat bar was in a competition in an RPS meet. I really liked it because of the girth of it at 35 millimeters and the feel on my back because it's a bigger bar and it's super aggressively knurled. It's just something that I wanted to add to my collection. But over the past couple of years, the probably most well-known and readily available squat bars of that nature being 35 millimeters were no longer in production. And then the two that come to my mind are the Elite FTS Mastodon bar, as well as the West Side Bulldog bar, which to my knowledge was also produced by Texas Power Bars, just like this one. And I think this is basically the same thing, but just branded Texas Monster Squat Bar as for one reason or another, they're not doing the Bulldog bar anymore. So anyways, I was just in the market looking for this and I reached out to a friend who works at Texas Power Bars, I said, hey, any idea where the Bulldog bar went? Is it coming back? When can I get one? I'm looking for a 35 millimeter barbell. And it just so happened, it was the exact day that this barbell went up on their website, which I was just on previously and didn't see. And they had literally just posted it at the time of me reaching out to them and said, hey, we have this new bar, it's here, it's out for order as of today. I took that as fate and ordered it on day one and got it several days later. And I gotta say, I really like this barbell overall. And my first impressions are really, really good. However, for most people, it's probably not gonna make sense. So let's talk about the specs of this bar really quick. So as I mentioned, it's 35 millimeters. It's like 101 and a half inches. It's one of the longest barbells that I know of that is currently made. Because of that, this thing is a monster in terms of what it weighs. It weighs 66 pounds, which is a good 11 pounds more than most other squat bars, which are already on the heavier side weighing 55 pounds. So if you equate this to a normal Olympic type barbell, like a power bar, it's 21 pounds heavier. So it definitely lives up to its name monster. And in fact, when you compare this to what it looks like next to a normal barbell, it dwarfs it and it's almost comical. So much so in fact though, when you also compare it to a squat bar, which by nature is already larger as is than a normal powerlifting bar, it makes my normal squat bar even look small. This being girthier, if you will, as well as several inches longer. So my rogue squat bar, for example, is about 94 and a half inches. So this thing right here is about six or seven inches bigger than that, three millimeters thicker. And that's really thick. To trying to put that into just comparison, think about a normal power bar being 29 millimeters and equate that down to two millimeters less, a 27 millimeter deadlift bar, which feels like a thin pool noodle. In this instance, we're talking about a 35 millimeter bar to a 29 millimeter bar, a six millimeter difference. Or if you wanna compare this to a deadlift bar, that's an eight millimeter difference. So this thing, like I said, is massive. Now, as part of that, the distance between the sleeves isn't really any different than some of the other squat bars that I'm used to. This one has 57 inches between the sleeves. And again, ideally when this bar was first put into production, the main use was for people squatting tons and tons of weight, typically in multi-ply gear, meaning that they didn't really have the best shoulder mobility. So the wider bar would really help with people setting up. Now I've made a dedicated video talking about why a squat bar might still make sense for some people, but the basics of that video is I prefer a girthier bar on my back. There's more points of contact. The squat bars also tend to be very aggressively knurled, which this one definitely is. I'll show you some close-ups here. And this is in black zinc, which I'll talk about in just a second, but it sticks to your back really, really well. And the fact that it's wider typically is a problem solver for a lot of people in like rogue racks, which are 49 inches wide, and who people might have trouble banging the uprights on squat walkouts. You will never have a problem with a squat bar, let alone this squat bar, because as you'll see, the collars on this thing are super thick as well. So I think it can still make sense for some people. Now, as I mentioned, this bar itself is black zinc. That is the 
only finish currently available on this bar. But if you take a look at, let's say, the Texas Squat Bar, the normal version, you can get anything from bare steel to chrome to black zinc to a multiple of Cerakote colors, whatever really floats your boat. I imagine the longer this bar is on the market, they'll probably offer some other options as well. But for me, the black zinc is fine. It's not my favorite coating because I do find that it tends to turn green a little bit over time. This one is in really good shape, unlike some of my other black zinc bars that out of the tube, they were turning green a little bit already. It also has the tendency to fade a little bit over time, which I'm not too concerned with being a single user here in my basement. It's not gonna get a ton of use necessarily considering it's going to be worked into the rotation of many other barbells. And also black zinc tends to dull the knurling a little bit, which in this case I'm completely fine with because this knurling eats my shit up. Like literally, I had a high rep set the other day that I had to do with this thing and it was killing the back of my delts. It was just really burning and in fact, several days later, I can still feel it. So if this was like a bare steel or a stainless steel, it would literally probably rip my skin up and would only really be used for max effort attempts and singles or doubles or something like that because I couldn't be able to stand it for rep work. Now, comparatively speaking too, I don't think this is gonna be in many people's wheelhouse based off of number one, the specs, right? It's ridiculous. No one needs a bar this big. It's awesome, don't get me wrong, but most people training at home especially will not need this bar. And in comparison, if you take a look at the normal Texas squat bar, which is funny to say, because even that thing is pretty big at you know 96 inches and 55 pounds, that bar retails for $390, which a lot of people would say is probably on the expensive side. I, I don't agree with that statement, but it, for most people on an average barbell, that's going to be a little bit more on the expensive side. The monster version here retails for $575. So you're talking about almost a $200 upcharge for this bar that many people won't ever really need because they're probably not gonna be squatting enough to really put this bar to the true test, if you will. Now, personally speaking, up until this point, and still at this point, my favorite all-around squat bar has been the Rogue Squat Bar, namely because it comes in stainless steel, the shaft is fully knurled, where this one almost is. There's about two inches in between the center knurl, which is six inches wide, uh, that isn't knurled. I don't understand why they just didn't go ahead and do it. Um, but the Rogue one is fully knurled. It has that Ohio Power Bar knurling, which is cut deep, but not a sharp aggressive. It's more of a grippy aggressive, which is great for everyday use, and I don't find that it tears up my back too much. And that thing retails for $450, so $125 less than this bar does. So it's a tough sell for a lot of people, but if you're looking for something that's just really a badass piece to add to your collection, I think this is it. Again, you really can't wrap your mind, or in some cases your hands, around 35 millimeters at 101 plus inches and 66 pounds. It does lead to some sets being a little bit harder to calculate. Your bar math is gonna be a little bit off and not your traditional numbers. Uh, but I have liked this a lot for doing squats, especially high bar squats. I find the bigger girth and diameter really lets me dig into my traps a little bit better than a skinnier bar would. And I've really enjoyed using this for squat work and I'm interested in using it for some of my heavier work going forward, which I'll update you guys on with the full review. But as you can even tell just from this video, as the name implies, it's a monster of a squat bar barely fitting in frame and barely fitting in my rack with one of the support beams here is in my basement. I gotta be pretty careful because the end's coming pretty close. But again, if you're interested in a 35 millimeter squat bar, this is probably like the only option for the most part right now. I know there's another company or two coming out with something, uh, but this is also the best option in my opinion because you can't really beat Made in America for this price and this feel and this girth and yada, yada, yada. You get the point. I like the bar a lot. Now, if you have any specific questions that I wasn't able to answer for this first impressions video, leave them in the comment section below. I'll make sure to answer your questions. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.